everybody, I'm Matt with Halloween Daily News. Welcome to the Halloween show. Well, here we are, guys. It's late January, and we are already getting our first taste of some of the new Halloween products that are going to be released later this year, including some pretty cool animatronics. And we got our first little tidbit of news about the first of two Batman Halloween movies coming this year. Here are this week's headlines. One of our most anticipated Halloween movies coming in 2021 is definitely Batman The Long Halloween. The highly anticipated two-part animated feature film adaptation of the classic mid-1990s comic book story. And this week, part one has officially received its rating of PG-13. The Motion Picture Association has rated Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 PG-13 for quote, violence, bloody images, language, and some smoking. First announced during DC Fandom in August of 2020, DC, Warner Brothers Animation, and Warner Brothers Home Entertainment will release Part 1 of Batman The Long Halloween in the summer of 2021, with Part 2 to follow quite fittingly in the fall. Originally published in 1996 through 97, the original 13-issue comic book story, Long Halloween, by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, follows a killer named Holiday who murders people on every holiday for a year, from Halloween to the next Halloween. And it features many of Batman's iconic villains as he investigates the murders over the course of that year. There's also been much speculation that director Matt Reeves' live-action The Batman, now due out in 2022, will be a loose adaptation of The Long Halloween. Warner Brothers is releasing four DC Universe animated films this year, the first of which, Batman Soul of the Dragon, was released on January 12th. Next up will be Justice Society World War II in the spring, followed by The Long Halloween films. The fact that it's already received its rating means that the marketing for Batman The Long Halloween Part 1 will begin very soon, so expect to see more in the coming weeks. Morris Costumes of North Carolina has begun unveiling their lineup of new Halloween animatronics and props that will be released in 2021, with a number of brief teaser videos posted on their YouTube channel in recent days since the Halloween and Party Expo, giving us a good taste of what's coming our way this year. The hooded phantom stands approximately 58 inches tall and features an injection frame with wire arms that can extend out to approximately 21 inches, as well as tattered fabric robe, a blow mold face, and it can be used with a fog hose and nozzle included. The fog flows out from the body and hands once attached to any fog machines. The life-size cellar dweller creature towers over everyone. It has glowing green eyes, body movements, and has three different sayings. This one called Cotton Candace features a poor little girl who gets all wrapped up in a sweet treat. All Candace wanted to do was eat some more cotton candy, and now she's having the time of her life as she twirls about, spinning and screaming, while the sound of distant carnival music plays in the background. Morris also unveiled a number of smaller animatronics in the three-foot range, including this new Little Top Clown, who looks to be standing about 36 inches tall, featuring moving hands and mouth, glowing yellow eyes, and four different sayings. And there's the Twitching Scarecrow that also stands at approximately three feet tall with moving arms and jack-o'-lantern mouth glowing yellow eyes, and five different sayings that he speaks. And the vintage doll also stands around three feet tall, featuring moving arms and mouth and her glowing eyes, with the sound of clicking gears echoing in her small, hollow body while she speaks three different sayings. And probably my favorite of these 36-inch animatronics is the Fortune Teller Witch, which features moving arms, head, and mouth with a glowing crystal ball that changes colors and her glowing yellow eyes, and she speaks three different sayings. And back to the life-size animatronics is the Electric Chair featuring a uh, handcrafted display of an unfortunate man being electrocuted to death, screaming in pain as his body is jolted from the charges and smoke and flames emerge 
once the start lever is pulled down. This one is made by Distortions Unlimited and it's called Dragon Legends. It's actually not an animatronic but a static prop featuring a hand painted dragon head that can be mounted on the wall featuring light up eyes and blowing fiery smoke from his mouth that changes color. There are actually six different colors to choose from including black, blue, green, orange, probably my pick, red and white. And finally, just revealed most recently, is the new Medusa static hanging prop, a colorful recreation of the classic mythological villain with the snakes in her hair and her scaly arms and hands. And if you haven't done so already, I recommend that you check out the fourth and final season of Netflix's Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Spoiler alert. The final episode takes place on Sabrina's 17th birthday, which also happens to fall on October 31st. So that means lots of Halloween fun, including a Halloween 3 Easter egg. When three familiar looking trick-or-treaters come knocking in not quite silver shamrock masks. It's quite fitting that the show ends with a Halloween episode because that's where it all began with preparations for Halloween in season one and Sabrina's big sweet 16 Halloween birthday. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is now streaming on Netflix. Of course, you can always find out more about all of those stories right now at HalloweenDailyNews.com. Our main story this week is, of course, this. The release of The Legend of Halloween. This is the new officially licensed illustrated children's book adaptation of John Carpenter's 1978 classic film, Halloween. This is my copy. I've read it. Here's my review. An official adaptation of John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween presented in the form of an illustrated children's book. The Legend of Halloween is one of the most unique and innovative horror collectibles ever released. The project actually originated as a wrap gift to the cast and crew after they completed filming of Halloween Kills in fall of 2019. But it turned out so well, producers decided to print a limited run for fans to be able to purchase. The hardcover rhyming book is co-written by David Gordon Green, co-writer and director of Halloween 2018, and its upcoming sequels, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends, along with fellow filmmaker Unor Tekel, who also illustrated the book, with Trankus Films producers Malik Akkad and Ryan Freeman overseeing. The story is based on the original screenplay of Halloween 1978, written by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. At just 56 pages, it's a brisk and easy read, and a fun and refreshing way to re-experience the legend we all know so well, of Michael Myers killing his sister Judith on Halloween when he was six years old, and then his escape from Smith's Grove, his return to Haddonfield, his obsession with teenager Laurie Strode and his murdering of Laurie's friends before their climactic confrontation on Halloween night in 1978. There are some great little touches that I know fans of the franchise will appreciate. Small details like Michael's middle name, the Red Phelps garage truck, Lonnie Elam's number 22 t-shirt under his red jacket, Laurie throwing a potted plant at Tommy Doyle's bedroom window to wake him up, and even Boombox Boy from 1981's Halloween 2 who makes an appearance in the book. Tekel's animation style is similar to Schoolhouse Rock and has a nostalgic simplicity that will warm the hearts of those of us who grew up with the now classic Saturday morning cartoons of the late 1970s and early 1980s. The writing is somewhat Dr. Seussian with its clever rhymes and wit, but with a few adult words like voyeuristic and themes like Paul wanting to get it on with Annie will undoubtedly require some explaining to less mature readers. There are also a few decidedly older references like Warhol, as in the late Andy Warhol, and Casey at the Bat, that kids and many adults will never get. I'm 45 years old, and I had to Google Casey at the Bat. It's an 1888 poem about baseball, if you're wondering. So there's no way an actual child will grasp that particular phrase, 
But overall, it's a faithful retelling of the classic story done in a way that almost all ages can comprehend and enjoy. Green and Tekel are able to successfully work in some of the actual quotes of dialogue from the movie at times, though there are some small changes here and there as well. The story is also told slightly out of order in the end when Lori sends Tommy and Lindsay to get help before the closet scene rather than after. When the book was first announced last October, David Gordon Green told Entertainment Weekly, quote, I have nine-year-old twin boys and I try to be somewhat cautious about the content that they absorb. I thought this would be a fun way to tell the story and establish the world of Halloween that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill started. With that quote in mind, my biggest question as I sat down to read the book this week was if it is truly meant for kids. Could it serve as a light introduction to the mythology of Michael Myers for those still too young to watch the actual film? Or is it really meant primarily for collectors and super fans like myself? The answer, of course, depends on the child and his or her maturity level, as it is in essence still a story of a madman killing innocent people. So if you're a parent who hasn't discussed what death is with your kids quite yet, they may not be ready for this book. On the other hand, my own son was nine years old when I let him watch the original 1978 Halloween film itself, and I could see using the book as a sort of precursor to set the stage if it had been available to us a year or two prior to his first viewing. But then my son also grew up in a house where Michael Myers is more prominent on the walls than his grandparents are, and where we taught him early on how movies are made and that they are make-believe. So again, it really depends on both the child and the parents as to what age and how to introduce them to the horror of Michael Myers. But while I'm tempted to say that if they are old enough to appreciate this book, they may be ready for the actual film itself, the legend can absolutely serve as a soft introduction to the Halloween franchise for some younger readers who can handle a newer and darker, more dangerous kind of fairy tale. And it is also kind of a stranger danger warning to kids that could and should be taken to heart before they go embark on a Halloween night of trick-or-treating around the neighborhood. Ultimately, this book is mainly for the mega fans, many of which will certainly use it as a way to introduce their kids to the characters and the general story from the film. And all of which will definitely get a kick out of seeing how much of that film is successfully and entertainingly reimagined in this entirely different format created with a clear love and respect for the iconic source material. The Legend of Halloween is not as much a radical repurposing as it is a totally original reinterpretation of a classic, fundamentally scary story that, like Frankenstein and Dracula before it, will live on long after its creators have left this world and will continue to hit those fundamental buttons of fear that Carpenter and Hill so perfectly honed in on for countless generations to come. Available now from Further Front Publishing, you can order your copy of The Legend of Halloween at legendofhalloween.com. <laughs> oh, Loomis. You guys, you got to check this out. It is actually, as of this recording, sold out on Amazon, but you can get yours through Shopify at legendofhalloween.com. Hey, speaking of Michael Myers, I want to invite you to join me this Monday for Michael Myers Monday Live. That's this Monday night at 10.31 p.m. right here on the Halloween Daily News channel. Until then, I'm Matt Arts for Halloween Daily News. Thank you for watching.